Welcome to the Mystic Access Podcast, where the magic is in learning. I don't know. I understand Mystic uh, Access gave uh, uh, something to our silent auction, and I'm sure it was sold. I don't know what happened, but I'm telling you guys, if you haven't bought the tutorial for Mystic Access on the stream, shame on you. It's gotten me out of all kinds of predicaments. I just get on there, and Kim's soothing voice calms me down, and step one, step two, and I do it. Oh, by God, it works. You know, it's, just, it's really great. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We want to welcome you to the Pat Price Tech Talk training room of AccessibleWorld.org. This is Robert Acosta speaking, the chair of Accessible World. Uh, the date is Monday, July 13, 2015, and we welcome two dear friends. I'm not going to say old because they're young, much younger than I am, but two dear friends of Accessible World, Chris Grabowski and Kim Loftus of Mystic Access. Chris and Kim of Mystic Access have been enjoying utilizing VOIP phone services for work and home use for years. In this presentation, they are excited to introduce you to the power, affordability, and rich feature sets of their favorite VoIP, I'll say VoIP, voice over internet protocol services. Topics of discussion will include what is VOIP or VoIP and why should you even consider it? What is required to get started using VoIP? The accessibility of setting up and managing a VoIP service independent of site. Why use VoIP when you already have cell service? Chris and Kim will briefly touch on each of the VoIP services they have used over the years which include 8x and 8 ring central phone.com and phone power they will discuss their two favorite voip services voipo voipo and uh, uh, via talk in great detail and will focus on the accessibility rich features and ease of use of these services ready to discover the possibilities to be found with VoIP, Chris and Kim look forward to sharing this with you. Mystic Access contact info, Mystic Access, and we give the address 733 Delaware Road, number 341, Buffalo, New York, 14223, that's 14223. Uh, to write to them, info at mystic, M-Y-S-T-I-C, access.com. Uh, web www.mysticaccess.com phone 716-543-3323 ladies and gentlemen it's my great privilege and honor to welcome Kim Loftus and Chris Grabowski uh, we're very honored to have you back again the microphone is yours hello all uh, this is Chris Grabowski. Thanks for inviting us to the Tech Talk so that we can do a presentation on uh, VoIP services. And just a disclaimer, we have the services that we are going to discuss, we have actually used yes, or are using. So we've either used them in the past or are using them. Yeah, that's very important to us. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Kim, and that's a very big deal with us. We always try to promote products that we are actually no, have knowledge about, we have something that we've actually used ourselves. We're, we're really not very fond of taking other people's words for it without having tested it and tried it and really giving it a pretty good pounding in terms of what it'll do for us. So when we talk about these, you can pretty much guarantee that we put it through its paces and it's probably uh, something that we've utilized pretty extensively so that's just a little caveat before we get started with sharing some about what VoIP is and how you can use it and the accessibility thereof I think that's one of the big things as people with any kind of a visual impairment that one of the first things we want to know is well that's great but can we access it and in the case of something like this the answer with at least our two favorite services is a resounding yes Yes, and exact. And one of the th first thing we want to discuss is what is VoIP. VoIP stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol. It's been around for quite some years. 
Um, if you use Skype, that's a VoIP uh, service, um, which we're not going to talk about, but just so that you are aware, that is a VoIP service. Um, the services that we have used in the past or are currently using are uh, 8x8, Ring Central, Phone.com, Phone Power, ViaTalk, and VoIPO. So it's a quite extensive list of um, services. And they all work pretty much the same way, don't they? Yes, they do. You get yourself a box that they send you in the mail, and you connect the box to your router. So you need high-speed internet in your router, and you can connect this box to the, to the router, and then you connect a phone to the box, and that gives you your phone service. Yeah, um, the box actually has phone jacks in the back of the box. And when we say box, don't be alarmed. We're not talking about the size of a huge, ginormous thing. They're not much bigger than a deck of cards, really. They're exactly. quite small. Um, also, too, just as, as an aside, if you have one of those Clasco talking caller ID boxes, you can connect that to the the VoIP service and that would work over for your call waiting and your caller yes. ID as well as your um, Panasonic, AT&T, any of those phones that have talking caller ID built in, uh, you would be able to hear the announcement of the caller ID. So, you know, those are just the types of things that we feel is important. Absolutely. With, with accessibility, if you want to really be able to fully experience something like call waiting and caller ID or caller ID over call waiting specifically, we definitely recommend if you can find them, you can't kill them. So if you, if you can find a Clasco still these days, and again, they're very small as well. They're about the size of, what do you think, Chris, maybe two of those little VoIP boxes? I mean, yeah. they're, not, they're yeah. not very big at all. They, they won't take up much of a footprint on your desk for Don't sure. Know. Why would you use VoIP? You can answer this one, Kim. Why would you use VoIP if you have a cell phone? I know a lot of people these days, they have a cell phone and that's their only phone, but why would, why would people go that direction? I think one of the advantages of VoIP, particularly in terms of call quality, is that the call quality of a VoIP line is going to be far better, generally speaking, even in a large metro area, than the call quality of your cell phone would be. The other nice thing is if you're at home and you have your cell phone and you're, somebody's using your cell phone or you're using your cell phone and you're expecting another call and you need to finish this call on your cell phone, it's really nice to have that other option. It's nice to have that other line that you can then utilize in order to take that call when it comes in. There's also the fact of portability. If I live in California and go visit someone in Arizona or Colorado or Tennessee, wherever I'm going, if I need to, I can just take my VoIP box, throw it in my suitcase, take it with me, plug it into that person's router, and I have phone service very easily, and it's not my cell phone. So once again, you have the portability of if you need to leave that there at their house for whatever reason, if you're staying a pro prolonged period of time, and you come back and you want to take your cell phone, put it in your purse, put it in your briefcase, take it with you during the day, come back and you can receive calls on your other phone while you have it there. It's really a convenience factor in many ways. I'm kind of at the point now where I'm beginning to think, and I do not live in a metro. That's a laugh, actually. But I really like the fact that I have the option of having, still having, even though I've ditched landlines years ago, having a VoIP service that will act as my primary phone line while I'm at home, but still have the flexibility and portability to be able to take my cell phone with me and knowing that while I'm away from home, I can get really crystal clear in incoming and outgoing calls with just really great quality and really amazing features for probably less than, well, actually definitely less than what you're paying for your cell phone bill. Exactly. If you want to talk about price, um, the Ring Central service that we can briefly talk about, um, I had that service back 2012, 2013, and as far as accessibility, I would rate it very, very low because I had to have one of the cited technicians, you know, the support for Ring Central, which the support for Ring Central was beautiful, but I had to have them go in and uh, have the phone line shut off. Like if I didn't want it to ring after five and before nine in the morning, I had to have them set that schedule. So, you know, that's very important. I also had to have them 
create um, uh, the phones, the phone uh, menus like press one for this and press two for that, press three for this. That was uh, for one phone line, and this may have changed, but for one phone line, it was fifty dollars a month. Um, Phone.com is another phone VoIP service that is geared mainly towards business um, business use as well, and that one, as far as usability, is I would say very, very, very accessible. Um, with the caveat is you have to know how to use your screen readers, um, mouse navigation uh, features in order to uh, route on some of those links because they are mouse over links. They're not press enter on this link and watch the menu come down link. It was just a, for example, in the back, back panel, there was a configuration link and you could hit enter until the cows come home and it wouldn't do anything until you routed your mouse to it. Once the mouse was physically there, uh, the menu would come down and then you could add phone numbers, add user extensions, add greetings and all that stuff. Once you got into that, then it was totally usable. One could create their entire menu system, press one to go to sales, press two to go here, press three to go to this extension. Uh, you could make um, weekend greetings, uh, business hour greetings, like if you wanted the whole menu system to change uh, based on a certain time. If you were out to lunch, you could have the menu system change and say that you were out to lunch or with another client, and all of this stuff was done uh, accessibility through accessible through the web browser. Um, porting a number is where you take your existing phone number from one service and move it onto another service. The phone.com service for porting a number was very accessible, meaning I didn't do anything. I called a representative and she took over, took my information. I, I emailed her a PDF of the last month's phone bill and they took care of everything. There was no, there was no, um, I didn't have to guess. I didn't have to fill out this PDF and send it over here or do this and that and the other thing. They did it all for me and the porting process took less than a week to do, which they say anywhere between, what, 10 and 15 days, business days to do a port, but they, you know, they give you that so that you're not calling them up every five minutes. Why isn't my port here? Phone power is another service that is very clear. It's very accessible. The call quality is excellent. Their support is also excellent. Their website um, could use, uh, leave a lot to be desired as far as accessibility. For example, each um, menu item had two links instead of one, and uh, it was definitely doable, but it wasn't something that I personally would like. I don't want to, I don't want to go fight with my phone service to change a feature, but it's definitely doable, and the quality, the call quality was excellent. The other thing, too, if you have an OB High box, um, you can get foam power for $60 a year, which is probably the cheapest uh, VoIP service if you did it that way. You can go to Amazon and buy yourself an OB High box and then connect to foam power, and it's going to be 60 bucks a year, um, taxes and everything included. So that's probably the cheapest one. I want to go back for a second while we're talking about this because I want to make sure people aren't really, really intimidated by this entire process. A couple things that you may be asking yourselves is, well, can I, can I easily move my landline to a new VoIP line and save a lot of money and, you know, have more accessibility, et cetera, et cetera, setting up some of these features? The answer is yes. With a lot of these, particularly the, the main two that we're going to talk about, you can port your number very, very easily. It takes... I'd say on average about two weeks, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less for the entire porting process to happen. And then your number has auto-magically changed over to the new service. As we were discussing previously, the only things you're going to need are high-speed internet access, which is very important, your modem, your router, your phone, and the adapter box, which they send you. In terms of setting this up with out sighted assistance it is very very doable if you do need to call a nice helpful tech rep 
particularly with the two services that we're going to discuss in detail momentarily, you can easily get in touch with somebody who's friendly and knowledgeable and who can help you out. Plus, with both VoIPO and Viatalk, which we're going to discuss in a moment, the support databases, in other words, the knowledge base of frequently asked questions that are available through the uh, respective websites are really fantastic in terms of the wealth of information that they offer on installation, setting stuff up. Really, it's plug and play. So you don't need to be intimidated about, oh my God, do I have to go in here and set this setting or set up this router setting? All you need is a couple Ethernet cords and you're good to go. <laughs> so all you have to do is know which one's your router, which one's your modem, <laughs> and where your phone is and where your box is. And if you're going to plug in a Classico caller ID, you probably already have that plugged in to begin with, so you don't have to worry about it. So it's really not an intimidating process to make this switch. The first time I changed to a VoIP service from a landline, I went from Verizon Horizon to 8x8, and I think that was mid-2008, and it wasn't difficult at all. I mean, I was a total novice when it came to something like this, and I had it all set up in five minutes. So it's a very simple plug-and-play situation and is relatively simple to do without sighted assistance. As I said, if you, if you do run into trouble with your box, it's probably something either with your box or with your ISP. And if you have a competent support person who will either sit on the phone or do an email ticket with you to assist you, then the likelihood is any problems or glitches that you do have during the initial installation, you will have fixed within a couple of minutes talking to somebody, as I said, either via phone or through an email ticket. So it's a very... It's a very low-key process, really. I mean, I know it sounds like it could be intimidating switching to an entirely new way of using your phone, essentially, but it's really not. It's it's pretty low-key. Uh, when I ported my Verizon number, going back to porting, speaking of, from my Verizon number to 8x8, which was my first VoIP service, uh, it did not go very well. Now, that being said, that was 2008. The... Porting laws have changed since then. Now a number is required to be ported. I believe that's my understanding from reading FCC guidelines and uh, things yeah, like that over recent months. So you were a little bit too early for the... I was a little too early for the guidelines, and I lost my initial number. The number I received afterwards, though, from uh, 8x8, I actually preferred. When I ported from, via, or from 8x8 to Viatalk last year... My port was smooth sailing. In fact, I think of, of all the people we know who have ported to Viatalk, mine was the fastest, wasn't it? I think so. The other thing I wanted to mention about Viatalk, and since we're talking about porting and accessibility and all that stuff. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. I, as we say, we have either used or have used said services. So when, when I ported my number to Viatalk, they sent me a PDF, it's called a letter of authorization. They wanted that filled out and they wanted it signed and they also wanted it um, uh, emailed, you know, emailed back to them or faxed back to them with, um, with a proof of a screenshot of your receipt or whatever. Pre and, re, re, uh, previous phone bill previous phone from your other company, right. what have you. You gotta have some kind of proof that you're indeed switching your service over. So I opened the PDF, and the PDF was name, then a bunch of lines, address, then a bunch of lines, and this, and that, and the other thing, then a bunch of lines. It was not a fillable PDF. So in doing that, I emailed them and says, look, here's the situation. Um, I can't fill out, and I want to do this independently as much as possible. That's, probably, that's the real key. I mean, I could have had someone come and fill it out and scan it in and fax it, but I wanted to do that as independently as possible. So I emailed them and I said, look, I says, you know, and I explained the situation. And within two days, they sent me a fillable PDF that I could electronically sign. Everything was editable. Fields were editable. The names read, name, address, phone, current phone number, and all that other stuff. And then I electronically signed it and sent it back to them. And I found that to be um, quite nice that they took that into account. Um, Moving over to VoIPO, having ported numbers into VoIPO, um, the porting process wasn't as smooth. It did work, but it wasn't as smooth. Um, they they um, 
they sent me the same PDF. I could fill it out, but I couldn't sign it. So I actually typed in my name where they wanted an optional field in and emailed them and said, okay, well, this is, um, you know, this is why I did it this way. And then finally I had to call them and I, I actually talked to a human, explained the situation within 10 minutes of explaining the situation to her. Sometimes you have to do that, call and explain. Um, the order was fulfilled. The port wasn't done, but I had already gotten my, within 10 minutes I had my port date to when the number was going to be ported. So, you know, they took, you know, they took it seriously as well as far as porting. That's one of the other really nice things about some of these services that we're talking about is they will give you a date and say, okay, you should be ported within blah to blah number of days. And then when your port is done, they will let you know, hey, your port is done. Do not cancel your previous service while you are porting. That's important. <laughs> Can I, do I need to repeat that? Do not cancel your previous service while you are porting. You will be in trouble. You will lose your number. You will lose your number. <laughs> so wait, please, until your current service says yes, hi, thank you, and yes, we have ported your number into our service. After you get that email, I would wait at least three more business days prior to canceling your other service. So do not cancel while you're porting. Now, what's going to happen is if you decide you want to go order a VoIP service, what they're going to do is give you a temporary phone number to utilize with that service until, A, you either decide you want to keep it, send it back, or, B, you decide, yes, I want it, and I'm going to port my, my regular number, my current number, into that service. So once your current number is ported in, you'll either lose the fake number or with a lot of these, I think with both Viatalk and VoIP, you get the option, should you wish, you can keep your your new fake number, as it were, but your temporary number, in addition to the number you just ported, should you wish to do that. Yeah, they, so, they call that parking. So what Yeah, it does you get to is, park your number. You get to park your number, and what it means is that if you've given your, this fake number out to people, um, what happens is when the port comes through, if you park the fake number or the, the secondary number, whatever you want to call it, um, it'll tell them that your number has been changed and give them the new number. So that's how that works. Um, as far as um, accessibility and stuff, we're going to kind of split this up a little bit more. Um, I'm going to focus a little bit on the VoIPO service because I have um, a lot of experience within the VoIPO control panel. So if you go into the the VoIPO control panel, you have your features and you have features such as call waiting, caller ID, voicemail and all that stuff and they're all within a features area on your page when you log in. So you hit a link, say you want to adjust your uh, incoming caller ID settings so you'd hit enter on that. The next page will load. You can jump. It's got decent heading navigation. So you can hit H a couple of times. And then you'd be in the meat of the, the feature. An incoming caller ID. Say, for example, you have a friend who comes up, and they come up as wireless caller all the time. And you know their number shows up, but it says wireless caller. You can go into incoming caller ID and change that name to to your friend's name or whatever you want to call them. So you know it has that um, as incoming and outgoing call recording. So if you want to record calls, you can do that. Um, small caveat: as of this presentation, there is currently an issue with Voipos call recording where if you download it via Internet Explorer or Firefox, the last, I would guesstimate, five minutes of recording time for whatever reason is truncated. They are aware of it. They are looking into the situation, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention that if right now today recording calls is important to you, um, the VoIPO service may not be good because you may not get the entire call. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's a 10-minute call or a two-hour call. The 10-minute call will get truncated as well as the two-hour call. Um, so you have call waiting, caller ID, voicemail. You can have emails sent to you. Um, and all this is done within an easy-to-use backend. And that's really important. Yes. Um, you can set up incoming call routes, which means that when a specific caller calls you, you can send them directly to voicemail. 
you can if they're annoying you can play a this call has been disconnected message you can play a busy signal uh, things like that all the things that you can really do with incoming call routes you can do the same with outgoing call routes so if you have children that you don't want them to call specific numbers um, you can have the number play be busy or say it's disconnected or whatever and this way they won't be able to call specific numbers um, that's that's pretty handy as well they also have star codes uh, when you pick up your phone and we're going back to the phone system for a second not in the control panel but if you pick up your phone you can do star like say star 28 and then dial the number and it will record the incoming call there's do not disturb there's voicemail you can do star 123 and it'll it'll uh, go check your voicemail for you if you have it um, you can also have it not prompt you for your pin which is nice too especially if you're at home with VoIPO one of the unique things that you can do within the control panel is to text so you can actually use your your VoIPO phone number to send and receive texts you can use that um, within the panel it's very speech friendly everything just it just works all the buttons are labeled I don't think there's one unlabeled button on that page I don't think there's one unlabeled field name on that page when you're when you're going through and making your settings they're either edit boxes combo boxes or buttons those are what they use so if you know how to interact with combo boxes buttons and edit boxes you're gonna be good to go yeah it's a cool service it's definitely got quite a lot of features and the accessibility is quite good the only issue as Chris was pointing out was the call recording issue currently otherwise it seems to be a very stable service we've not had any dropped calls or anything weird when you and I have had conversations I know that when you originally got the service you had to have some tweaks but that is normal with VoIP and that's I think something that's good to mention is that occasionally it's going to need a little tweaking because it does come over your internet service you know it, it does use your modem and your router and your internet and your ISP to conduct its its business essentially so occasionally it is going to need tweaked occasionally it's going to have a couple of weird glitchy things that you don't always hear with your landline that being said it's probably going to sound a heck of a lot better than your current landline wouldn't you agree yes so that's that's just something to keep in mind with some of this occasionally you will need to be tweaked for instance when I signed up with Viatalk uh, which is my current home phone service and I absolutely love it I did have to have some tweaks done I had the volume of my call recording changed I mean uh, just a few little things one of the things that I like so much those of you who know me will get a chuckle out of this with the via talk control panel is the amount of heading navigation available I love my heading navigation and when I see a great deal of heading navigation used within a site I'm automatically going to be impressed one of the really cool things about via talk that's cool and actually the only reason Chris is probably using via talk is because of this particular little glitch right here is uh, or it's not a glitch it's actually feature. pretty brilliant yeah uh, it's a feature that they offer is they have a demo control panel that you can go into and actually check out what the back end looks like without actually having to sign up for the service so you can actually see the accessibility in there uh, the feature set is amazing they have uh, pretty much the same feature set as VoIPO they do have some couple of cool additional things they have one thing called call alarm so if you need to set up an alarm like it's my anniversary and if I forget my anniversary my spouse is gonna kill me yes yeah, so if you won't need to set up okay I'm having a busy week tomorrow's my anniversary you can set it up to send you an anniversary reminder on the day that you set you can set it up to remember a birthday you can set it up to remember uh, I have a meeting I have to go out to lunch with blah now you can't set up the personalization but you can get a phone call for instance on my dad's birthday I just wanted my memory jogged that said, oh, yeah, I need to call and talk to my dad today. So I set up a birthday call on my dad's birthday, and I received an automated call on his birthday at the time and that I specified that said, it's somebody's birthday. 
So I thought that's just a cool little neat extra feature that you don't often get. You have things like, uh, I can't remember, I think it's called Call Hunt with them. It's kind of like a find me, follow me feature. You can have multiple phones ring to search for you and find out where you are. There are speed dials. Both Voipo and Viatalk have really nice speed dials. So if you have people who you call regularly and often, you can set them up as speed dials and uh, hit a star, blah, blah, blah. And there's, like, for instance, with Viatalk, it's star zero one, star zero two, star zero three, up through star zero nine. And you can set up speed dials in there for whoever you want. All you have to do is pick up your phone, dial star zero whatever, and it will call that person for you. So that's easy peasy. And then you have standard features like call waiting, caller ID on call waiting, three-way calling. They have a really nice do not disturb feature. With Viatalk, you can actually create schedules for do not disturb. So if every night you automatically want your phone to go off from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., you can set that up and you never have to touch it. Or you can do what I often do, which is hit the star code, because Biotalk also has really nice star codes. Pick up your phone, call star 363. It'll say, do not disturb, main menu. Press 1 to enable, do not disturb. Press 2 to disable, do not disturb. And you can press whichever option you like and easily set that up. There's also one of my mother's favorite features, because I talked to my parents into switching over to uh, Biotalk for their service. They were on Verizon paying a fortune for their monthly service and now they're paying for like a year what they paid for like three months <laughs> so i uh, i convinced them to change over and my mom we're, we're all jokingly calling my mom the blocking queen now because every time i talk to my mom she's blocked new numbers you can pick up your phone stall uh, after after you've received a call and before you receive another call that is important you can pick up your phone and call star 255 which is star blk and it will allow you to block that number. It'll read you back the number, and you can say, yes, do you want to block it? And then you can route that number in your routing options to whatever you want. So it can route to authenticate, where if they call you, for instance, they have to enter a code before they can get, they can get through and speak to you. You can have it do a long ring, busy signal, disconnect, um, all sorts of options. There are whitelist options, so if, if you have certain people like your spouse or your parents or your kids or whoever, and you want to make sure they can always get through whatever other options you have set up, like do not disturb or routing or what have you, then they're on your whitelist, therefore they can get through whatever's going on. You know, even if you have do not disturb set, the, the whitelisted numbers can get through. So that's a really nice feature set, and I know that both Voipo and Viatalk have that feature. They do. I wanted to interrupt you for a second Please do. because I wanted to get back to the the speed dial functionality yes. that you explained in uh, Viatalk. But Voipo takes it a little bit differently. Um, yep. You can have an obscene amount of <laughs> speed dials by assigning like one two to somebody else, one one to somebody else, fifty eight to somebody else. So your job then is to remember what numbers you assign to a specific person. Like you could actually um, do if you wanted to add your mom in as a speed dial. You could always do six 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 for M O M. <laughs> although that she probably wouldn't like that if she knew the number. <laughs> But you could. I mean, you could spell out, like, a person's first name if they're, like, four or five characters, yeah. and you could do it that way. So you could have what Voipo calls virtually unlimited uh, speed dials. Yeah, that is cool. And I think those, correct me if I'm wrong, with that particular feature in Voipo, you don't use the star code. So no. you would just pick up your phone and call 666 <laughs> to reach your mom. Yes, you do. <laughs> Or Aunt Matilda, I guess. Or Aunt Matilda, yeah, or whomever. So that's that's really nice. I think the thing that impresses me so much, uh, particularly with Viatalk, because it's my it's my home service and I use it, you know, every day, is their their customer service. They have some of the most stellar customer service I've ever used in my life. Um, they're they're just incredible. Uh, that it's one of the actually cool things that they do that I don't think anyone else does. You can pick up your phone and call Star Help star four three five seven and it will connect you with customer service i love that i never have to remember their 866 number because i can just pick up my phone call star help and be able to get through and 
get somebody who can generally solve my problem in five minutes. It doesn't always work that easily, um, but generally speaking, it's a very easy process. If you have a problem or you need to talk to somebody about something, you can easily, easily do so, and it's a breeze. What I really like, particularly with Viatalk, and I know that Voipo has this as well, is, as Chris was saying earlier, the, the ease of accessibility with a screen reader in terms of combo boxes, labeled edit fields, buttons. There are buttons all over the page. There are search fields. Like, like if you go into their help, da their, help their knowledge base, uh, you can easily, easily move through. You get heading navigation. You have search buttons. Uh, there are more buttons than links in terms of those things that you're actually going to be clicking on, either links or headings, you know, within links within headings. So, I mean, the accessibility of these two services particularly is really, really stellar in terms of if you're one of those people, if you're kind of tenacious and stubborn and, you know, like we are, and you want to be able to do it independently, darn it, you know, that's important to you to be able to sit down, configure something, uh, I'm somebody who likes to go into a back end. Chris can tell you this because I'm maddening about this. He says, oh, you're going to go into your service and you're going to change every setting you have in there today. And I'm going to say, yes, I am. Because I like to configure stuff. I like to have stuff just the way I want it in my phone service <laughs> or in anything else for that matter. But um, I really like to be able to do that. And to be able to do it independently without having to ask anybody anything to be able to go in and do it. Uh, I think the example Chris gave of the PDF is a really shining example of that willingness to assist customers in that way. Uh, it's it's just really nice to, you know, how often do we find a company and we're struggling with something or a customer service person or whatever it is in terms of an inaccessible issue that we can't figure out independently. And many times it's very difficult to explain to a person or to have them to... Uh, completely understand that we aren't sighted or we have minimal sight and therefore it's very difficult to do something uh, without them giving us another alternative way to do it or to uh, help us figure it out. A lot of people just aren't willing to go that extra mile or they have no idea what the heck we're talking about. Really, someone without sight is calling this number? I mean, it seems like you're someone from outer space sometimes when you're talking to certain people. <laughs> and I don't say that to you know, downplay, downplay the job of the customer service rep. I mean, I know people are busy and I know they're all trying to do their jobs, but I really like when a website has automatically put so much of this stuff in place, willing, uh, wittingly or unwittingly, we don't know, but man, it sure is nice as a screen reader user to be able to bounce back and forth with your screen reader of choice between headings and links and buttons and what have you to be able to easily find the information that you need. And that's within the control panel and on the main pages of these websites. So I think that's really incredible. So you got ease of use. You have a marvelous feature set with stuff that you just aren't going to see on your primary phone service. And even if you find it, for instance, apps that'll help you do it on your cell, your cell service, a lot of times you have to install them, configure them, and then pray that they're actually accessible. <laughs> so that's another good point about a VoIP service. This stuff is built in and you automatically know that you can jump into their control panel and customize that to your heart's content for whatever features work for you, whatever you would like to set up in there. So that's really nice. I know for my mom, for instance, as just a quick example of that, my mom has been dialing 11-digit uh, dialing for years. <laughs> so when she got Viatalk just uh, after, uh, just right at the beginning of the new year, uh, she was like, you mean I don't have to dial blah, 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 blah? I can just dial seven digits straight through? Yes, Mom. As long as you're within this local area code, you can dial seven digits. And she thought that was the most amazing thing ever. She was so excited to be able to dial seven digits within her area code. And then did never have to dial one ever again, essentially, unless she's calling an 800 number. So, I mean, the... I think the reason that we wanted to share about these services is that, A, a lot of people don't know about them, and B... The people often wonder if they're accessible. You know, is it something I can go in and, and complete independently without having to have sighted assistance? And we're very pleased to say that it is. And our experiences with these particular services, particularly the two that we just spoke about, have been really just quite stellar. Um, 
So what do you want to add to that, Chris? The only thing I would probably add is going back to the beginning of that is uh, as far as, and this may have changed, but as far as accessibility, uh, Ring Central is not the greatest as far as their back end goes. But I also did want to mention, um, we're talking a lot about home services, but you can utilize VoIP for business services. Absolutely. And phone.com was one, again, that was geared for uh, business services, meaning it's got the auto attendant and the, the queues and, you know, things that press one for this, press two for that, um, you know, those types of options. Those are all configurable without sighted assistance. The menu systems, you would either record yourself, you know, the audio prompts. And what they do is they suggest that if you're doing a menu system to record the prompts first, because that way when you're building your menu system, and it makes sense, when you're building your menu system, you know you want one to go to support, you want two to go to sales, you want three to go to blah, blah, blah. So you record that menu prompt, you know, audibly, upload it, and then now it's live. When you press one, now you need to tell one that, yes, it d does go to sales or support or whatever I used. I don't remember. So let's say we use support, and then we hit one for support. Then we have to create that menu. You record that. Press one for so-and-so. Press two for so-and-so. Press three for so-and-so. Or you don't have to land in a menu. You can actually just ring the support line if it's, if it's aligned with the support queue, and you can build all this stuff yourself. Um, it takes a little bit of, of thought process, um, but it can be done. Um, as far as business goes, too, um, Voipo has a, a PBX, and the PBX system in Voipo, again, it has auto attendance and queues and, you know, you transfer from this extension to that extension and, you know, music on hold and all that stuff. But um, Voipo's... PBX is accessible. It's very, very accessible, but it's not. It's not wrapped in a in a cute um, user interface like Phone.com's is, for example. I mean, you create a menu for Phone.com. You go into the menu system and you add a menu, and it prompts you for all the things that you need. Where Voipo's um, PBX, it's you basically. It's extension based. That's about all I really am going to get into it because you need at least a few days if you're just learning about this stuff to wrap your head around it. But you can do some really amazing things with the with the Voipo PBX. Yeah, you're very welcome to call our uh, our main number and see what we did with ours. It's a it's a pretty it's a pretty fun trip, and uh, it's also I must say a third or almost a third of the price monthly. Uh, than the phone.com thing, even though it's not wrapped up in a pretty package, it's much cheaper. Well, let's put it let's put it to you this way: phone.com to get two phone lines, to get two unlimited phone lines, and um, and um, the auto attendant and all that stuff would run seventy nine bucks a month. To get the Voipo PBX and two lines, it would run twenty dollars a month for the PBX. And then if you were to get two years of VoIPO business service, it's $149 plus whatever your annual sales tax is. Now, that was $149 for two years, which rounds down to uh, $6.21 or something a month. So put those, if you do want to do month, it's... Um, it would be twenty six dollars and some odd cents a month, but you'd have to pay for the the two year up front. Yeah, and that's for one line. If that's you added another line. line, you know, two two lines plus the VoIP uh, or plus the PBX is what like thirty two bucks. Yes. A month. Yes. So I mean, the the other thing about the speaking of price, the VoIPO service, whether it be business or this is not counting the PBX, that's a whole other critter, but the the business and residential services for the VoIPO uh, are both the same price. You can get two years for 149 The residential service for Viatalk, you can do a couple of different ways. You can get two years of residential for 189 That's for two years. Or you can pay 1575 a month. With the VoIPO, you can pay 15 bucks a month. 
should you wish to pay monthly for whatever reason, uh, and you don't get the free, you don't get the free stuff, you don't get the free annual, you know, the free year of service. And I think the Viatalk Business Service is about depends on which one you get. I think they have a, a unlimited and a fifteen hundred a month. I think the most expensive one is like forty five bucks a month. So they they do charge more for their business, uh, and you don't get much more for it, unfortunately. But the service is great. The I will service, say that. Yeah, but. You, you can. Uh, the business one is roughly thirty-four dollars for fifteen hundred minutes a month, and um, I think it's forty-two dollars a month for the business service, which is ten thousand and twenty minutes a month. The Viatalk and Voipo. I mean, they say unlimited. But they're unlimited within a. You need to read the terms of within service. Within reason, yeah. Read your terms of service. Definitely. I mean, I think residential for for Viatalk and Voipo were both around five thousand some minutes. Right. Uh, we figured this out. We calculated this one time. It's like eighty nine hours <laughs> of talk time a month. <laughs> so I mean, that's and if you do go over the overage charges, they're not bad. They're not bad at all. Another thing I want to mention real quick. Speaking of. Uh, charges and things, two things. One is don't, you know, when we're talking about taxes, taxes and fees, um, in terms of a monthly tax, I, for one, am paying about three bucks a month for my taxes and fees. So, you know, it's essentially nothing. You know, they're coming off my credit card once a month, and as I said, it's about three bucks for my Viatalk uh, 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 residential service, pardon me. Um, in terms of one other quick feature that we failed to mention is with both Voipo and Viatalk, you get 60 free minutes of international calling per month for free. Uh, this is within certain countries. You can view all those on the website, but I think you've got like 60, cho uh, 60 choices of countries to choose from. I have really dear friends in the UK, so I love having that free hour to play with, plus their international rates are really nice i think on both services they've got really nice reasonable international rates but i really like that free uh a free hour a month of international calling i know the uk is one of the uh, countries there there's spain and portugal and you know various various countries so if international calling is something that's important to you you can do add-on plans for international calling which are very affordable uh, but they also have really affordable international rates for both companies as well. Plus that 60 free minutes, I know, is comes standard monthly on. Uh, I, maybe there may be there may be some caveats to that. Um, I don't know about Voipo for sure, but I know with Viatalk you you do get 60 free minutes to certain countries mm -hmm. uh, per month, so a free hour. One, so that's something else cool to just keep in mind. One thing I wanted to mention before, a couple things I wanted to mention before we take questions. Um, there, the VoIP services work with soft phones, and a soft phone is a program that you install on your computer, and it turns your computer using a headset and a microphone or a, uh, speakers and a, and a microphone into, a, into your, your phone service. So if you don't want to deal with the box, you don't have to. Um, you, could, you could install the soft phone. There's two of them that we have personally played with. One is called Phoner Light. And the other one is called Express Talk by NCH Software. Um, that's the, the, they are very accessible. The phone or light is it kind of has a weird user interface, but it's definitely usable. It's definitely accessible. The the Express Talk is uh, accessible with a decent user interface as well. Um, was there something else that you wanted to mention? Some kind of a tutorial or anything? Yeah, yeah, we. Uh... For those of you who want to explore this further, we have two new products in the Mystic Access store. If you go on mysticaccess.com, we've created a couple of tutorials uh, in the last week that can assist you in learning more. There is a VoIPO tutorial and a Viatalk tutorial. Uh, both of them are over 40 minutes in length. I take you step by step. I show you the home page of each site. I take you back into the control panel, show you the control panel of each site, and we go through step by step all of these features. 
um, the, you know, the features that are available on each service. These are two distinct tutorials. So there's one on Viatalk and one on Voipo. And we go through the features. I show you the accessibility, the layout. We do it specifically from an accessibility standpoint. So if you have any concern or are wondering more about the accessibility or, you know, you want to use it for X, you know, you have something specific in mind that you want to know about how does it work, I take you through the control panels of both services and show you everything that's in there so it's a pretty cool walkthrough in terms of being able to see it from an accessibility standpoint how it works with the screen reader the features the layout the so you know the ability to be able to utilize the services through the website so that's something to keep in mind we've priced them very very affordably they're 597 a piece so that's as I said, time, one's just for our time and putting it together. Yeah, that's just for our time and putting them together and yeah. editing them. I mean, they're they're very professionally done because we don't release anything that isn't, and we uh, we wanted to just you know kind of get you know get our time out of them anyway. So we wanted to price them very affordably. If it's something you want to check out, if you wanted to consider a VoIP service and bought them both, you'd be paying less than twelve bucks for both of them. So the, that's the, almost the, two hours of content. The, the beauty of the tutorial, at least as far as the VoIPO tutorial is, you can't see it as an end user, where yes. the ViaTalk one, you can use demo, demo, and log in and, and play with it yourself. But the VoIPO one, because they don't allow it, you can't. So that was actually one of the reasons for these tutorials, that you can go in and and uh, check it out yourself. That's the, true, and there is there is some more explanation of the features. I share a little bit more about what they do and what they are, and kind of explain that a little more to you, so that you can get a, an explanation. So it's just a very friendly walkthrough of the services. So you know, if you want to gain confidence in using them, or it would also be a really great getting started tool to assist you if you had just purchased your service. You can kind of learn how to walk through it with your screen reader of choice. So we wanted to put those together and make those available for you if VoIP is something that is of interest to you. Again, they're five ninety seven a piece. However, for the next week, we are putting our Tech Talk code back in the swing of things. So we want to give you guys a little present for showing up and listening, and you know, we want to express our appreciation. So tell them about our code that we got going on for this week. The code is Tech Talk T E K T A L K no spaces seven one three for today's date and that gives you ten percent off of anything in the store including the tutorials the training uh, the trainings anything. the um the the victor reader stream audio tutorial that'll get you ten percent off of that as well so yep um, and it goes through monday yes. so you've got a week to use it so we are going to give the microphone back to you and if you have any questions um, for us now is the time, and we thank you for thank you so much listening to our presentation. And uh, here we go. Hold on. This is incredible, and I was just thinking as I listened to your great presentation, will there be a tutorial? And Mystic Access says yes. That's terrific. And uh, again, let me do it right. No spaces. Tech T E K T A L K seven one three is your code and you have a week guys and I would get it you know whether whatever you do believe me the tutorials are well worth it again if you have questions and you have no mic hit F8 write your question and enter your name pops up right there so there you go if you have a mic hit F8 and the letter Q and enter and with that let me ask Ron our live screen reader do we have any questions please uh, yes, I see three right now. Uh, Alan Lemley is first. Thanks, guys. Uh, Chris and Kim, as always, an outstanding presentation. I, I'll admit I'm a bit of a dinosaur. I, I've got the OIP service, but I've got it through AT&T. And so I've got their box plugged in to, you know, to their outside lines coming in, I guess. And then all of the jacks in my house are available where I can plug in wired phones using RG11 or standard telephone cables into those boxes. So with these these services like you're talking about, whether it be VO Talk, VoIPO, or any of the other ones, what happens if you want like two or three phones in your house? Uh, how do you go about doing that? I mean, uh, I'm assuming you've got to have their box plugged in to your wireless router, but... Uh, do, do you, does their box communicate wirelessly throughout the house where you can hook other boxes for other phones or leave me by the hand thanks good question actually what you can do there there are 
two ways to do it. Um, and the one I actually discovered by <laughs> accident. <laughs> um, the first way that I actually prefer is to get a cordless phone with multiple handsets. That way you plug the cordless phone base into your box and then you can take your, say, two or three or five or 12 other handsets um, and put them all throughout the house. And in this way, the, the rooms don't even have to be wired for jacks. Um, the other way that you can do it, and I discovered this by mistake, is to take the phone wire and plug it into one of your jacks in your house that's dead, and your phone service, your dial tone, will come through those jacks. Um, you know, your other jack, jack in the kitchen, jack in the bedroom. Um, if the, you have a jack in your office, you'd plug the, the box into that uh, jack, and you would have dial tone service. That was a very good question. I was thinking of that. I have several phones. Okay, Ron, next question, please. Okay, Mike is next. Hey, guys. Um, this is a good presentation. I was wondering, uh, I have two questions. First of all, is there um, rollover with the um, Viatalk uh, 60 minutes a month? And the second question is, is can you give um, an initial, you know, price um, that it costs you guys to just get the services going? Thanks. Sure. The initial price, if you go for two years for Viatalk, is $189. That includes two years of service. It includes them shipping you a box. If you want to go month by month for Viatalk, it's $1,575. Nine, uh, 75, I think, 75, yeah. Something like that. It's within the 70s. Um, and that includes the box. Uh, for Voipo, it is $149 a month, or a year, for two years, sorry, for two years. And um, if you want to go month by month, it's $15, and that also includes the uh, box. But as far as the other question about rollover minutes, they do not roll over. <laughs> No, they don't roll over. You got to use the the sixty minutes, and then your you know whatever your five thousand limits uh, minutes of of use you know during the course of that particular month. The other thing worth noting that we didn't touch on, and Mike, you you bring this up when I'm thinking about your question, is the fact that I believe, and Chris might know more about this than me in terms of the Voipo, but I think with Viatalk you also get a fourteen day trial. Uh, well, fourteen day money back guarantee. So if you're unhappy it, within the first couple weeks, you can send everything back, and I think most of everything will be refunded to you. So whatever you put on there will be refunded. I think they they might make you pay shipping back for your box. I don't remember because I haven't done it. But um, you won't lose very much to try it out and see if it's something that you like. Voipo gives you a 30-day, and you have to um, you know send back the equipment as well. Um, as the other thing to take note is I'm not sure about Voipo, but Viatalk has their VT World plan. So yep. for $8 a month, I think you get 1,200 minutes of international calling. So that's quite a bit of minutes. Yeah, I'm very tempted to do that, actually. That's a really good deal. <laughs> if you do a lot of international calling, that may be something to consider. Okay, that's very interesting. All right, Ron, next question, please. Okay, Kenneth is next. Okay, let me make sure I've got it here. I wanted to ask if the, either one, Voipo or Viatalk, has a feature uh, to where if somebody calls you and uh, you want to transfer somebody from the extension you're on to some, some other extension you may have in your company, and you directly transfer people to the other extensions, I, I hope you understand. The PBX does for VoIPO, you have to have the PBX and you have to have, you have to be using the extensions. That can be done, but the, the VoIPO and Viatalk, you cannot transfer between, uh, between um, lines. Okay, uh, Ron, another question? Okay, we have two more right now and Beth is next. Hi guys, great presentation. How about <coughs> E911, where the 911 dispatchers can tell where you are when you call. Also, security. How secure is VOIP versus the hardwired <laughs> old-time phones? And also, remember to tell people if you record their calls, and if your internet quits, you'll lose your VoIP for us for, for whatever period of time that is. Thanks. 
E911, uh, absolutely, all services, I think, are required to do that. So what you do is you go in and you tell the, there is a little link um, within both of them. It's very important. They even tell you in the sign-up emails to set your E911. So you set your E911. If you move your box to somebody else's house or another location, you, of course, would uh, do your change E911. It. You change your setting to their address which takes 20 seconds, if that. Um, the other thing that, um, as far as security, these are all encrypted, so it's probably more secure than your, your hardwired landline phones. Um, I, I forgot what the, oh, the, yeah, if you do lose internet access, you do lose your phone system, but they all have failover phone numbers that you can, like, if, if you, like me, don't give your cell phone number to people because I use it for internet browsing and stuff like that. You can have the Viatalk service call your cell phone or VoIPO service or any of these for that matter. They can dial your cell phone if they, for whatever reason, can't communicate with the internet. So the person gets forwarded to your cell phone number versus your, your Viatalk box or VoIP box. Yeah, and that's really easy to set up. I mean, that's just like anything else. You'd go in, find the right heading or the corresponding heading for that feature, and you could set that up very easily and, you know, unplug your box, test it out, you know, if you want to make sure that everything's working. But just because you lose your, lose your VoIP temporarily doesn't necessarily mean at all that you're going to lose your service as long as you set up a failover number. Yeah, you'll still receive calls on yourself. Yep. Okay. And the last question, Ron, I think? Oh, yes. Uh, the last question is from Chico. Okay, my question is this. Um, uh, for Mr. Texas, you're going to put this on the, on the RSS feed. Um, and uh, also, uh, the next question is, uh, if I want to order it, do I, do I call the individual companies or do I call Metro... Um, Mystic Access if I want to do it, and uh, what kind of credit card do you accept? Because I have a prepaid uh, Visa card, and uh, if I were to get everything that you just mentioned, how much would I have to pay? Yes, um, we don't sell these, these services. We are just basically coming here and giving them um, for accessibility because, again, people don't know about them. So you would, if you wanted to check out VoIPO, you'd go to VoIPO, V-O-I-P-O dot com. If you wanted to go to Viatalk, check out Viatalk, you'd go to V-I-A-T-A-L-K dot com. And those, th those would be the companies that you would set your, your service up with. Again, we don't sell... We're not resellers of these products in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, we're just selling the tutorials that share about the products. So, you know, if you want the tutorials, come to us. If you want the products, you would go directly to them in order to get the products. And they have really nice sales staff and people you can talk to more about the service themselves so that, you know, you can find out more information about whatever it is that you want to know. You can call sales and they can hook you up and you know, set you up with a particular service if there was something you wanted to know more about that you can't find on the website. But we do sell the tutorials through mysticaccess.com. We will also be putting this in the RSS feed yes. when, when the time comes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, how do I get to... Okay, so uh, go to the websites and uh, you'll find those, uh, Chico, okay? Uh, Ron, I think that does it on the questions. Uh, yes, that was the last one. The thing that struck me at the beginning of this presentation is something I should have known in the past. Uh, these guys use, they use the product. You know, they, they do, they, they live it, they use it. They don't tell us about some strange product and say, you know, I really don't know that. We'll look it up, whatever. Uh, some vendors do that, as you well know. Okay, and I'm very impressed with that, and I hope you are a very consumer-oriented company. These wonderful people are consumers. I want to thank uh, Kim and Chris for being here this evening. I want to conclude with you guys giving final contact information. We thank you so very much for this great presentation. So we're going to turn the mic right over to you, too. Thank you. Thank you so very much for having us. Um, Mystic Access contact information is, go ahead. Mystic Access, you can contact us by calling 
543-3323. Depending on what you want to talk to us about will depend on which number in that little menu that you press. <laughs> you can also, if you haven't checked out our podcasts, we have some fun ones recently. You can visit mysticaccesspodcast.com and learn more about the podcasts that we are putting out. We can, if you want to visit the store or the website, the main, the main product and business website is mysticaccess.com, M-Y-S-T-I-C-A-C-C-E-S-S.com. Uh, info at mysticaccess.com will email both of us. So if you want to email us directly, uh, you can utilize that email address, and that will get to both of us. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, whatever you'd like to see, uh, everything is very accessible on the website. Obviously, something we pride ourselves on as consumers, as ourselves. So we are very grateful for the opportunity to be back on Tech Talk. It's really fun to be back and hanging out with you guys. Lovely to hear some fabulous friends and familiar voices, and we appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with us tonight. It's been great. Thank you so very much. Thanks, guys. Okay, and you guys always have an open invitation. This is such an exciting company. <laughs> They're always coming up with something new, and this certainly is something to think about, this new Internet phone service. I want to thank all of you for coming this week. Next week, we hope to have uh, Blind, Blind Square. And they're going to do an MP3 uh, you know, podcast. I'm not sure if Rob Nevin is going to be around for any questions. I can't promise you that. I will write him and find out. And yet, we'll be able to send questions into them. This is the way we're going to have to do it because these guys are all over the world. So with that, I thank you for coming and have a wonderful week. Hi, Chris. If you're still out there, I got a question. Um, you never mentioned. Uh, do you guys take uh, phone orders? Um, what did I say about next Monday's uh, Tech Talk? I missed that. I had to do some er errands. Um, so, yeah, those, that was a great presentation. Uh, really great. Um, uh, so, um, if I were to get everything, um, would I have to use one or the other, or I can connect both services and swap out my Verizon Files uh, phone ser home phone service? And also, can I can I import two numbers into two numbers? Like, um, I want to if I want to get the the um, service number one and service number two, can I import uh, both services into my cell phone or can I import it into my cell phone plus my plus the home phone? Or do you have to use one or the other? To answer the previous question, we do take phone orders. Uh, Chico, we... Um, you can buy 15 phone lines from each service and run them <laughs> if that's how you want to If you want it. to, yeah. Sure. It doesn't really matter as long as you have the bandwidth. You, you know, um, we have at least one phone line from each service. Hey, uh, thanks for the great presentation, and um, thanks uh, as well for answering my questions. I really appreciate it. And I uh, also want to say that I... Uh, I really do enjoy all the um, podcasts that you guys put out. Thank you. That's appreciated. Thanks. We appreciate that. It's always fun to have people listening and enjoying stuff. And we certainly have fun putting them together. I just like doing the sound effects and reverbs and things at the beginning. I think that's my that's one of my favorite parts is putting that kind of stuff together. <laughs> oh, you mean like the type light? <laughs> yeah, like the type light. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of funny. That one, um, I didn't realize I had my uh, uh, book reader turned up way high. And it really um, started to echo in my ear. And I thought... Things were going haywire. You got covered with the uh, with the uh, fallout. Falling from the debris from my blast from the past. Yeah, sorry about that. That's uh, <laughs> you never quite know what I'm gonna throw up at the beginning of some of these things. So gotta gotta be careful. <laughs> oh no, that was great. I really love that. <laughs> The preceding podcast is a presentation of Mystic Access, where the magic is in learning. To contact us, please visit www.mysticaccess.com. Call us, 716-543-3323, and press 2 to reach our Mystic Access podcast comment line. Email us, 
at show at mysticaccesspodcast.com and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash mysticaccess. Would you like to spread the word about our podcasts? Please tell your friends and colleagues to visit us at www.mysticaccesspodcast.com. If you enjoy what you hear on our podcasts, feel free to leave us an iTunes rating and review. We certainly appreciate those. Also, you may feel free to use our podcasts in your own RSS feed. Just be sure that all of our contact information is left intact. Thanks for spreading the word, and thanks for listening. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode.